No, if it was a conspiracy, it'd be quite easy to root out the perpetrators because you could find them uh, and then the system would continue uh, healthily again. Uh, the point is the system's never really been healthy. Uh, the system, uh, everyone says, has failed, and that's wrong. The system has worked perfectly according to the rules that it's been set upon. We've legitimized and glorified those rules, and because now we're at the end of the benefits of economic growth, suddenly the whole thing has come crashing down. So, what do we do? Well, we identify what the real problems are. The problems of people like rent seekers. Uh, and until you start rooting those behaviours out of the system, you'll never get the system functioning as it should do. So, is it a conspiracy? No, it's not. Is it structurally determined? Yes, it is. Uh, it's parasite and host, and until we start getting rid of the parasites, the host won't get better. So was it the baby boomers' fault? Um, no, not consciously, but we have to agree that the baby boomers haven't left the economy in a better shape than which they found it. Um, the point is that what we don't need now is intergenerational conflict. Both generations uh, need to be able to sit down and talk to each other and work out a way to forge ahead and create another economy, a different paradigm, um, so we can uh, collectively leave the place in a better state uh, for the generations coming through behind Generation X and Generation Y. So, um, was it their fault? No. What we can't do though is become tribal. They were caught up in an ideology that they really unconsciously um, followed. Um, I don't think they did it with any kind of malice whatsoever. Um, it was just that they were told that's how things should work. So the point now is we've got to re-engage and both generations need to come together and work out uh, the best way out of this let's say, mess. An awful lot of politicians in the West are professional politicians and uh, that's something that doesn't really work because these politicians don't have any real world experience. They don't understand how a business truly operates. They have existed in the bubble of Westminster or Washington and that uh, means that they're hindered but real world knowledge just isn't available to them. Um, so what we need now are people who have been involved in the real economy, run businesses, understand how the economy actually works. Remember, politicians uh, think about the next election. Statesmen think about the next generation. What we need now are people who've been involved in the real economy, understand how it works, and understand that they need to leave the place in a better state, in which they found it, for a future generation. That is the type of leader that we want, not the professional politician. Uh, no, uh, those people are making an awful lot of money, but the human cost that it takes to make that kind of money and the human cost that it takes on the other side of the equation to take that money out of the system is something that I'm not interested in, frankly. Um, those guys I meet often um, regale me with a story that once they finish their first career, they're going to start on the second. Uh, and I think that's um, interesting, really, that because what they say is when, when we start the second career, they're going to put something back. Well, my view is that if you've got to put something back, really that something shouldn't have been taken in the first place. The gold standard is a brilliant metaphor for a filmmaker because everyone's got a bit of gold and they understand that it's an inherent store of wealth. We don't recommend going back to the gold standard. We use it to indicate that if you have a money supply that's in private hands, bankers are incentivized to grow that money supply because that's where profit lies. That uh, said, though, gold bugs, as they're called, understand the real importance of a uh, stable money supply or money supply stability. So what we need is independent money or sound money. Uh, and that needs to be in the hands of the people, not in the hands of private institutions. A, f a, a fixed money supply is, is a no-go, uh, but a stable money supply transparent fiat money supply audited perfectly and monitored by every population uh, in compar in relation to population growth and um, how much trade is going on within that society is the cornerstone to a decent economy and you could also argue democracy first thing to do is re-examine everything that you've been taught, whether it be at school or university or in fact in the workplace, uh, and only accept it if it fits your common sense. The second thing to do is re-engage. Remember, politicians at the moment are pretty much a colossal distraction. So what we have to do is make them work harder for us. 
Uh, and if they're not going to do it, we step up into a position of leadership. Uh, politicians must know that they are in our service. They are here to serve the electorate. And at the moment, uh, that relationship isn't working. So re-engage, make them work hard by understanding the uh, eco economy in a way that they can't question, um, and um, take self-responsibility. A minority of people in the Q&As put their hand up and they say, I'm just a small cog, I'm just one of billions, what, a, what can I do to change this system? Well, an awful lot, um, because frankly, that's the only thing that did ever change any system. Human beings acting in concert uh, to rectify a problem that they see. Locking yourself away in a cave and having non-confrontation in the world, I don't think is a clever option. So, what to do? Well, organise. Uh, talk to the people who share your value system. Uh, create a cooperative that uh, serves a purpose within your uh, town, city, country. There's plenty of things that can be done and more importantly there are plenty of things that are being done at the moment. Our tour with this film, uh, we've met loads of people who are all thinking and doing the same thing but they just don't know that everybody else is thinking and doing it yet. There will become a moment, there will be a moment where uh, there's a kind of enlightenment where everyone realises that, that through necessity they are acting in a way that is actively changing their communities, their societies, their countries, ultimately the world. Um, so one has to continue. Keep going down that path, uh, don't lose hope and mix with good company. Simply, uh, budget. Uh, we didn't have the time or the budget to go over to China, Brazil, Russia, uh, or South Africa for that matter. Um, but the uh, other reason is that I haven't, we haven't as a team lived under those economies, so we have very little uh, experience of them. And I think you should make films about the things that you know about. Um, so yes, the rise of China will have an impact uh, on the world stage, no doubt. But my view is that if we are going to be relevant in the West in the next decade or two decades, we should get our own house in order before we start lecturing other people on how to run their economy. It's tough for small countries because markets will take a dim view on a uh, small country um, getting its economy geared in a way that serves the majority instead of the minority in the fire sector, the financial insurance and real estate businesses. But what you can do is work with other countries, uh, self-educate, understand that people are out there and they're in the majority and what could happen is in concert uh, democracy uh, at a global level can be implemented. But that only starts by communicating with others, understanding uh, that you have to get organised and getting a network of people together who want to push forward the same kind of reforms so you can go as one and you're not isolated when you eventually become the threat of a good example. You see, unlike books, you can't burn the internet, and uh, the internet has a life of its own. The knowledge on it uh, is, is incredible and will continue growing uh, as we as human beings keep using it. So yes, slightly worried about uh, censorship because governments will go to any length to block the internet and also use copyright laws to, uh, let's say, block some of the knowledge that is going into the world, some of the knowledge that they don't want, um, you know, uh, internet users to be, uh, to, to avail to internet users. But ultimately, human ingenuity um, bypasses all those blocks. So we need to keep a very close eye on how the, uh, the governments are going about censoring the internet, but ultimately it is an ally. It doesn't, however, replace the um, interconnection between human beings. Internet is a tool. What we really need to do is get in the same room, discuss ideas, exchange ideas, um, and uh, meet. Um, human beings meeting will always surpass what you can do online. Neoclassical economics has been with us for around a century and during that time it has created huge amounts of environmental damage and suffering, not just to uh, humans but also to uh, the wildlife on this planet. Why? Well, neoclassical economics doesn't exist in this world. It's a theory and it's a theory that doesn't work. The neoclassical economist for instance, doesn't see land as a unique factor of production in any of the models that they create. So, uh, they conflate land with capital. 
Um, and that clearly means that we are uh, then, let's say, incentivized to destroy the planet. Another thing that they don't do when they're coming up with their models to uh, understand the real economy is they don't ever factor debt, money or banks into them. They think that they are totally surplus to requirements. Well, how possibly can you uh, model an economy when these things are, uh, are left out? Ridiculous. So it's an ideology that has been pervasive in academia and in politics over the last hundred years and it's delivered us to where we are at now. Uh, the other thing about that is the neoclassical economist is a silo thinker, looking at ver one very, very small area of the economy instead of taking a broad, holistic view. Well, so what do we do? Well, we've got to get rid of it. And that's starting to happen, thankfully. Students are starting to walk out of economics lectures. It happened at Harvard at Greg Mankiw's lecture um, at the end of 2011 because they're no longer, uh, let's say, willing to accept the constant failing of this ideology. So uh, neoclassical economics, yes, it's delivered us to where we're at at the moment. It, there are a couple of good bits in it, and as Herman Daly says in the film, we should learn a little bit about it because you have to know thy enemy. Um, but ultimately, it's not an economic system, or it's not a piece of software, if you like, that humans uh, are able to tolerate anymore. And the hardware of the planet, as we're trashing it on a daily basis, that won't be able to, um, let's say, accommodate the neoclassical ideology. So it has to go. And the question now rages, whilst this crisis is still on, is what's it replaced with? And that's exactly where to focus your attention. What should we replace neoclassical economics with? Well, we should uh, re replace it with a system that puts people and planet first. And that's where the debate is headed. So the crisis can't go to waste. Uh, neoclassical economics has to go. And we have to come up with an economic paradigm that is of this world and suitable for the 21st century. Whilst we were making the film, I met a lot of politicians, bankers and policymakers. Um, when I invited them to come on air and tell me some of the things that they were telling me in private, they wouldn't. They wouldn't put what they were saying on camera. And that's when I realised we were on the right track. I'm hugely optimistic, and in fact, even more so having done the Q&A with the film, because we bumped into thousands of audience members who are all thinking and feeling pretty much the same thing and are no longer willing to accept the current status quo. So uh, I think it's the most exciting time to be alive, frankly, and I think that it's a time where people, if we are going to make some kind of huge jump uh, for humanity, what we have to do is pick the right kind of change, and that comes with self-education. So I think that uh, we should remain optimistic, but we should also remain realistic. Self-education is everything. We have to pick the right kind of change. And the other thing which is more important is we have to be dedicated to process, not result. As more and more younger generations have traveled, their empathy has grown. They've seen the world. They're a lot more worldly. They're a lot less, uh, let's say, um, uh, caught on silo mentality. They've got a bigger, more holistic worldview. And those are the types of generations that are going to push the change. What we have to do is be brave enough to jump into the unknown and understand that once we look after the process, ultimately the results will look after themselves. Unfortunately, with Four Horsemen, what I had to do is start in the negative and highlight all the problems uh, in the economy, all the things that were going wrong. But whilst we were doing that, what we were finding equally were that so many inspiring people doing so many brilliant things around the world. So we weren't thinking about doing a sequel, but once we'd heard about all these brilliant stories, we can't not depict them. We can't not go around the world and capture these. Um, so the sequel is uh, um, coming soon. It is uh, about all the good things that are going on uh, and all the, the businesses that are working, the governments that are working in the best interest of their people. This type of story. So if you'd like to support it, if you have a story that you'd like to share with us, please don't uh, hesitate to get in touch because we'd love to hear from you. Equally, if you'd like to support the film, we'd be very happy to um, uh, help you do that. Um, so fourhorsemanfilm.com, obviously the website, or The Renegade Economist, get in touch. Thanks. Uh, we're making more films, and um, to do so, and to have the editorial control that we need, we need you to help us. So, uh, give us loads of money, thousands, millions of pounds, engagement rings, cars, anything really that you uh, see lying around. I can't say that, can I?